What's the secret behind Alexander Volkanovsky's insane strength and cardio? Let's take a deep dive into the unique training methods that Volk has shared on his YouTube channel over the years, many of which you can apply to your own fight preparations. Volk's a big fan of high intensity interval training. Off camp, we see him perform a hill sprint protocol with five one minute sprints, pushing him towards his maximum heart rate. I've done a few uh, hill sprints, but this is probably the hardest one. It's the longest. So uh, start off good, but then your legs just give out. So the goal is to get your heart rate up as high as possible. So we need you pushing as hard, hard as possible. Set your first distance and then try hit that each and every time. And maximal effort is the highest level of intensity that a person can sustain over a certain period of time without significant fatigue. Volk completes supra maximal efforts, exceeding his maximal aerobic capacity. We see him slowing down significantly as he approaches the top of the hill. He recovers on the way down and at the bottom of the hill for what's likely three to five minutes. The key is to allow enough rest to perform the next high intensity effort at a similar level. This type of training improves cardiovascular metrics such as stroke volume and cardiac output. It also increases the number of capillaries surrounding muscles and the concentration of mitochondria within muscle cells. Or in other words, your muscles have more highways to deliver fuel and more power plants to produce energy. This results in improvements in anaerobic fitness, VO2 max, maximum heart rate, peak power and oxygen delivery. Hit sessions like this one improve Volk's ability to repeat high intensity efforts as well as his mental resilience. Going into his fight camps, Volk's conditioning sessions get more sport specific. Volk's SNC coach Chris Jeffrey says that he doesn't do much running overall. We only do a little bit of running so this hill really helps us drive the heart rate right up. However, there's one more running protocol that we can see on his YouTube channel, repeated stair sprints. It's a 157. All right, we ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Volk follows a set route up and down the stadium stairs. He completes 11 stair sprints of about four to eight seconds. In between sprints, he has five to 10 seconds of active recovery, which he also runs at a dangerously high pace. Coming down from the last set of stairs, he finishes with a 10 second sprint on level ground. His overall effort is just under two minutes. According to Volk, he does this once a week with the goal to beat his previous time, which obviously becomes harder and riskier each week. After three weeks, he changes to a different set of stairs and protocol. This type of training is a lot more time efficient compared to the previous sprint protocol, which probably took him 20 to 30 minutes to complete. In addition to his sprinting routines, Volk also performs high intensity workouts at his MMA gym. Seven weeks out from the Ortega fight, Volk completes a hit circuit with the assault bike, heavy bag, ball slams, push-ups, squat jumps, and inverted rows. It's important to point out that these are all rather simple bodyweight movements. There's no heavy lifting involved, which reduces the risk of injury under fatigue. Three weeks out from the Ortega fight, Volk completes a shark tank session, which he calls the meat grinder. He does five five-minute rounds of pads, striking, wrestling, and jiu-jitsu with four alternating training partners. The idea is to make these sessions harder than his actual fights. This helps him prepare not just physically, but also mentally. Apparently, Volk does this once a week on Wednesdays. Wednesdays we do like a VO2 max sort of workout. Long and hard, which uh, obviously sucks. Put it this way, the fight ain't gonna be that hard. It's just, it's just so we can uh, maintain composure. Uh, when, we, when we have to dig deep. One week out from the Ortega fight, Volk shifts from live rounds to sport-specific drills and exercises. Part of the reason is likely the reduced injury risk. He calls this session the spider. We work up to that because it's such a crazy workout and you want to peak at the right time, but it just involves everything. Very uh, fight-specific type of movements, uh, like takedowns, run the pipe suplexes, all that type of stuff. Bring the adrenaline rush up as much as you can. That's why the intensity is always high, to really give you that, that fight feel. Again, it's five five-minute rounds of maximal intensity. Volk does this session exactly seven days before the fight. With his recent decision to fight for the lightweight title, Volk had to add some strength and muscle to his frame. He performed classic strength and hypertrophy training in a calorie surplus, especially early in the camp. The main goals of this camp, the main priority is to go in a lot stronger in, in this fight. Compared to the other camps where we've needed to be a bit more explosive, we've really tried to maximize our strength for a lot longer through this camp. That strength block, we went for a while, a good eight week program, maybe more of just the bulking strength base. Volk tapers off the volume of his strength work closer to a fight. The focus then shifts more towards power development, for example, through plyometrics or heavy sled work. Both improves neuromuscular coordination and motor unit recruitment, allowing him to be more powerful and explosive in the fight. It's no surprise that Volk is in excellent shape for all of his fights. Not only does his SNC coach Chris Jeffrey put him through the right training methods, he's also on top of his training periodization off camp and leading up to his fights. 
To learn how to periodize and taper your training for peak performance, watch this video here next. Drop a like and comment if you want to see more videos like this. As always, train hard, recover smart and fight easy.